Lillian Blessing 3 Heaven and Hell Encounter Part 3 Three days after I spoke to my pastor, I felt tired just like when you are recovering from a sickness. I used to have youth from the church come into my house to cook for me when I needed help. This time, no one came into my house. They were all busy, the Lord kept them busy. I felt tired. Couldn't get up. I was feeling some pain and I asked, why this pain? I thought to myself maybe. It's because I am recovering, I will just catch up. When it was about 1 p.m., I felt worse. I wasn't recovering as I thought. I said, I think I am going. Back to my father now that I have delivered the message I was told to. I have delivered the message to my pastor and he will inform the church and I will go. In the evening around 4.00 p.m. I regained strength so I went out to buy milk and drank so that filled me up. I had not eaten anything but I didn't feel hungry too I was just all right. I worshipped God for some time. I was washed and dressed as a bride by an angel. I saw people were gathered in the church for the wedding ceremony. Some were in white dresses. Others had dresses with spots. Some had other dresses in different colors. I concentrated on the people in white clothes. I looked around for the bridegroom but I couldn't see him. After I looked around in the church, the angel again carried me to the entrance of the door. When I looked outside the church compound it was all green. Beside the door was a very narrow way made of gold it was a leading far away to an unknown place. The groom carried me in his arms. Now at the door, the angel transferred me to the hands of the groom. Now, the groom carried me in his arms. This groom was so beautiful and glorious. I wanted to look at his face but I couldn't see his face. When we were going, his feet weren't touching the ground. I could see that the narrow path was decorated with very beautiful flowers besides on both sides. The flowers were singing praises understandable praises. They were praising as we were going. We were going very slowly. To me I wanted this wedding to happen. I was thinking, why are we going so slowly? When we went a little further we met some people. Most of them were men and little children. I was asking, but where are the ladies? I saw three ladies but the children were many. They were singing. They sang and sang. They said this is the best wedding ever. Yet when they sang I couldn't understand the words yet, it was beautiful and good to listen to. Dot the appearance of the children was so glorious. My body was different as compared to when I was going to face judgment when I wore a creamed dress with spots. My body that time was black. As I am today. After the angel came and prepared me, I realized my body changed to another. It's not what I am seeing now. 1 Corinthians 15:51 Behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. When I looked at those people I met I had the same body like theirs. The men were in white robes, with belts. The three ladies were also in white with belts but the little children were having white robes with no belt. They were all happy and singing. Everything there was good. We went a little further and went to heaven's gate. I realized it was heaven. Then I saw the two angels standing in front of the gate. On reaching there, the groom put me down and told me these things, go and tell the church after he said this, I found myself back in my house. I was brought back to my body on earth. I started crying. I was feeling bad, why do I have to come back? I was expecting to enter the gates. I was confused so I took my phone and called my pastor and told him all that happened. Now, my pastor took his time to explain to me everything. I asked my pastor, is there anything I need to do to go back? Pastor replied, no, you have been told to go and tell the church those things you saw. You cannot go like that, 
you haven't finished the work of God added my pastor. What I learned was that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the door. He is the one who took me from the church gates to the gates of heaven. He is the way, he is the one who carried me from the church along the narrow way to heaven. In the church, I saw some people wore white dresses, others wore stained clothes. Meaning if Jesus had come at that time, some of the members would be left behind. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Right now if I come to take the church only 10% of Christians all over the whole would be able to make it to heaven. That was in March 2017. Brethren, whatever I am saying today isn't for entertainment. It is not for looking for money, fame, or glory but for the kingdom of God. It is for the body of Christ. Let's be careful, the bridegroom is coming, the rapture is near. We will miss the rapture if we go back to the things I have mentioned that I saw in hell, even I myself. After this, there is a mistake I made. When I went to hell I saw ladies burning in hell with earrings and hair extensions. I disobeyed God again. One thing I learned is I saw the braids, hair extensions, and wigs are all sinful so I decided to use knitting yarn, wool, to plait my hair and put on small earrings. I said, these are just okay. My pastor questioned and warned me about me the earrings. Little did I know that the Holy Spirit was speaking through him. I told him don't worry, pastor, it's as just knitting yarn. Today, we are in 2019. Last year was 2018 and this happened in December 2018. I tell you the Bible is very clear. It says in Isaiah 45 colon 9 Woe to him that strives with his maker. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashions it, what makes you or your work, he has no hands? The Bible says in Genesis 1:27, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. Created he him, male and female created he them. This means we are made in God's image and his likeness. When we attach this artificial hair to our heads we mean God didn't create us well so we are correcting God. There is no scripture in the Bible that says, I have made you ugly so go and make yourself beautiful. God doesn't need you to be more beautiful than he made you. He has made you beautiful and wonderful already. Psalms 139,14 I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows right well. When I returned from the hospital I lost my job. It took me a long time to recover so my boss couldn't wait for me. So I had no job and asked myself, what am I going to do now? I know how to braid and weave, I won't put any attachment on my head but if I get a client I will do it for her for money. I thought to myself, as much as I can do it and get some money. We had a conference and the pastor invited one man of God. The man told me, God says he has called you, you have to do his work and he will feed you. It was the same thing my pastor told me, do the work of God, and he will send an eagle to feed you. I heard it but didn't listen. I said, before God send an eagle to me I have to do something. I used to talk to some born-again Christians, what am I going to do to live? My daughter is in school, I have to eat and also pay my rent. In response these brethren told me, God always gives grace period. When he tells you to do something there is always grace. You can still do it until God give you another job. So I started braiding for others to get money. Any time I get the money I will be unwell and spend it on the hospital bills. The doctors couldn't even diagnose to see what was wrong with me after a series of x-rays. The doctor told me, we can't give you any medicine. Just go and fast and pray. This is what a doctor told me. They only gave me a painkiller. Not all diseases are treated in the hospital. The doctor said, 
if you want me to give you medicines I can give you but they won't help you. I didn't understand what I was going through. What am I going to pray for if I fast? Is it healing? Or what? I was warned by a man of God. One day, a certain man of God saw my testimony on YouTube. He arranged for me to see him personally. When I went to see him he said, Now tell me everything you experienced. I told him the whole testimony then he said, Do you know that you are going to die and go to hell? I asked him, Why? He said, You have been warned against these hair attachments. Secondly, when you saw the earrings God was warning you against anything called jewelry. Now you yourself, you have an attachment on your head, secondly, you have jewelry. There is no difference between big jewelry and small ones. Then he asked me, what is the difference between one fourth kilograms poison and one kilogram poison? Is there a difference? I replied, no. He said, all is poison. All of them destroy. Again he said, now you are saying you are doing your hairdressing as a born again. Can you sell alcohol though you are not drinking it? I replied no. Can you go to a witch doctor or advise someone to go to a witch doctor? I answered no. He said, then why did you go back to hairdressing? I am warning you, go back and repent and tell God to forgive you. You have disobeyed so go and repent. If not I assure you, you will die very soon and go to hell. I returned and sought God in prayer and fasting for three days. It was December 2018. The day I broke my fast was a Friday morning. In the afternoon around 3 p.m., I felt so tired and decided to rest. The Lord sent me to hell again to learn. When I lay down in a couple of minutes I saw a man dressed in white with a golden belt with a staff in his right hand. He came and stood beside me and said, Lillian, I want to take you to hell. I replied, No. I was afraid so I started to beg him saying, I don't want to go there, please forgive me. His tone wasn't harsh at all. He was very gentle. He said, Lillian, don't be afraid. There is nothing bad, I just want to take you to hell to show you something. I answered no. I still don't want to go even if you want to show me something. He said, I want to take you to hell. My blood is your strength. After he said, My blood is your strength, I knew this is Jesus. I accepted to go to hell so he took my hand and we went. When we reached the gates of hell, he took the keys, opened the gates and we entered and walked. On very dry ground. Both sides were all dark but our pathway had light. I knew this place is hell. So I was checking to see if those demons I met previously were around but there was nothing. I couldn't see any of them. So we walked together until we reached the center. The Lord told me again, my blood is your strength, and he left me. The way by which we came was nowhere to be found. There was no way to come out. I saw many living preachers in hell. On one side of hell, I could see lots of people burning and on another side there were also people there who were still alive on earth but their souls were in hell. I wondered why are people on earth who are not dead here? When I asked the question I saw written above waiting. I asked, what were they waiting for? The majority of those who were there were preachers, pastors, evangelists, men of God, and born again Christians. I could see all those in that section had grey skin color. Even the Europeans. Among them were grey in color. They were not being tortured. They were just happy and enjoying. Themselves. However, those who were already dead and condemned were very black from burning. I had the chance to question them why they were there. They told me it's because of this end. That reason, that is why they were there. Some were thieves immorality, worldliness, etc. These people were still serving God but were 
still in sin. Some were false teachers, some made mistakes and God gave them time to repent but they never repented so they were given retrenchment letters. I saw the letters. God gave them retrenchment letters. They were signed and they accepted it. Some were just deceiving people. They were serving Satan in the name of God. Even preachers who preached holiness were there but they were on the waiting list. I spoke to all those I know. Afterward, I started looking for a way to get out. Now demons came and grabbed me. They took me into a small room and locked the door. They took chains. They bound me up with their chains. My hands were tied together behind my back. My body and feet were all bound in chains. One demon went and brought the knitting yarn I always used on my hair to tie my hair with. Another demon went and brought the extensions I put on people's heads. Some of my clients were dead long ago. They cut the hair I made for them and brought them to me and put them all on my head together with the knitting yarn I used. So my head was very big. Another demon went and brought petrol and another brought matches, lit it onto my hair, and set me on fire so I started burning. My scalp was bursting, it was so painful. The room in which I was was transparent. I could see the demons outside and they could see me too but I couldn't do anything because I was bound with chains to the floor. I was weeping with all sorts of cries. I remembered what the Lord Jesus told me, my blood is your strength so I thought of calling upon the blood of Jesus but before then I thought of calling my pastor on my phone first when you are in hell demons read your mind so I was looking for my phone around me. The demons laughed at me and said, Madam, you cannot make a call here and that pastor of yours is not here. Here is not a place to make calls, so shut up. They laughed as they spoke. I now called on the blood of Jesus and I saw Muslim women coming to attack me. They could still penetrate into my room with their hands and told me to stop calling upon the blood of Jesus. They didn't want to hear the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, so they reached out for my neck. They were still burning in their clothes. I was in pain, burning and crying but could still see what was happening outside. The walls around me were transparent so I could see how the demons were torturing people. It was horrible. Especially those who were in immorality. Pastors who sinned against God were in the center of hell and were being punished according to the sins they committed. Those who worshipped idols, did witchcraft, murdered, those who committed abortion and supported abortion they were all in the center of hell and torture. Those who murdered and committed abortion, the demons cut their flesh and gave them to eat. Those who were in witchcraft were also eating their raw flesh. Now in my crying and suffering, I wanted to call upon the blood of Jesus but I was afraid of the Muslim women. They were there listening just to hear me mention the blood of Jesus then. They would come for me. Punishment for wrong sex and the use of contraceptives those who committed sexual immorality, wrong sex types, oral sex, anal sex, doggy styles, and all. That is practiced in pornography, people know what I mean, all those are an abomination in the sight of God. I saw people who were accused of defiling sex. They didn't go outside their marriage. But they didn't have sex the way God created it to be. A couple was there for one thing, for defiling sex. I asked, how? This is a couple, you know. When you think, you are referred to the scriptures in the Bible. I tell you judgment is here nobody. Will be judged without the Bible. When you ask why are you being thrown to hell, the Bible will be opened and it will be read to you. A scripture was given to me concerning the wrong type of sex. Genesis 3:16 to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception, in sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. My mind captured the last part, your desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over you. Therefore if a husband is meeting his wife in sex, he must rule as the Bible says. 
he must be on the top in the ruling position. Anything apart from this position is called sexual defilement or unclean sex those who were found guilty of unclean sex were hanged up with their legs wide apart both men and women. They brought a thick acid-like porridge in a bottle and inserted their male organ into the bottle that burns and causes the skin on their penis to fall off. They screamed with pains. All who committed masturbation and other sexual malpractices especially the Christians among them they had the worst torment. I saw other demons in the form of men grabbing another lady. Another demon took a condom and inside the condom were tiny babies like insects. They lifted the condom up for the lady to see and said to her, Do you see? These were your children you killed. Her husband used condoms to sleep with her to prevent pregnancy. She was accused of two reasons. One when you use a condom you are defiling sex. Two you are a murderer because every semen is a child. It is God who creates children and decides which one will grow and which one should not. So any time you use condoms, you are killing the children of God. I was surprised to see condoms in hell. Another demon came and showed me a box of condoms. How they are made in hell and send them to the earth. I thought how can this be a sin? Where is it in the Bible, I was given Genesis 38,8 and Judah said to Onan, Go into your brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to your brother. 9 And Onan knew that the seed would not be his. And it happened. When he went into his brother's wife, that he spilled on the ground, not giving seed to his brother. 10 And what he did was evil in the eyes of Jehovah. Therefore he killed him also. Condom users are in hell. They use condoms to control birth and didn't ask God. It is God who controls birth. God himself created man and told him to multiply and replenish the earth so. When you use the condom you spill the sperm on the ground. I saw that there are people on earth whose places in hell have been prepared already. I saw one. Kenyan politician whose place in hell has been prepared already. He is only waiting to die to receive his torment only waiting to die. I saw that they had prepared a place like a house with a big room and smaller other rooms. I understood that the big room stands for his major sin and small rooms are his small sins. There is no difference between small and big earrings. After seeing all these I was afraid and was afraid to call upon the blood of Jesus. I gathered courage. And said, I will call upon him come what may. I said, the blood of Jesus is my strength. Several times the Muslim women came to touch me to beat me but I kept calling upon the blood. And the seventh time all the chains on me loosened, the fire on me stopped burning and the door was. Opened. So I came out and walked. I didn't see anyone as I kept walking. I saw a woman standing there alone. She had very small earrings on. I saw those earrings turned into a hacksaw and a snake. It cut her ear round till she bled. She also had a small chain around her neck. That chain also turned to be a hacksaw and began to go round her neck and cut her neck until she bled. The woman was crying and I said, this is just a simple small earring, why is this woman tormented like this? Then I saw Ezekiel 7:19. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. There. I remembered what a man of God told me, what is the difference between a one-fourth kilograms of poison and one kilogram of poison? They are all the same, whether they are small or big, they are still poison that destroys. From there, I saw young men and women in a queue. Each of them had a hair dye in their hairs. The dye in their hair had turned into acid burning them and their hair and flesh were falling off. They were bleeding and crying. When I saw them I said, this is not wrong, this is only a dye. If you applied black dye, the acid would be black. If it's a brown color so will be the color of 
the acid. As I thought that I saw Matthew 5.36 Nor shall you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair black or white. In other words Jesus is saying we are not allowed to change the color of our hair, maintain your natural color, keep it as it is. If it's black keep it black, if it's gray let it be. I saw another group who were only men. Their hair was being shaved with broken bottles. I understood that these were men who have styles in their haircuts. Then I asked, is shaving wrong? The Bible says men should shave their hair. Then I saw the Leviticus 19:27, you shall not shave around the sides of your head nor shall you disfigure the edges of your beard. God wants men to cut or shave their hair evenly without any styles or designs. In all these scenes I was seeing, I was still looking for a way to get out of hell. Finally, I saw the man who took me to hell. He walked past me and stood behind me. Then I saw a way in front of me to get out. He locked the gates of hell and we followed the way away from hell. We arrived in a wilderness. There, I met another servant of the Lord whom I know very well. She preaches holiness. She was running towards hell. I asked, why are you going to hell? I have been there. It's not a good place. Then I saw her church. In their offering basket, I saw a big dotted snake going into the offering basket to eat the money. Now I understood why this woman was running to hell. She was deceiving the people. She wasn't serving God. If she was, there wouldn't be a snake swallowing their offering. The Bible says, Not all who call me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7:21. Now this issue of jewelry and makeup many women are using them. You see many women. Preachers preaching the word of God and delivering people, so many of them, they are doing a good job but they won't make it into heaven. Exodus 33 5-6 For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are a stiff necked people, I will come up into the middle of you in a moment, and consume you, therefore now put off your ornaments from you, that I may know what to do to you. 6 And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. God himself told the Israelites that if he should walk with them he will destroy them because of the ornaments. So he will not change his mind. You can serve God and still not be with him. God has spoken and will never change his mind about jewelry. You can serve God and still perish. God has promised you to take you to the promised land. Some Christians think the old Testament laws are not needed in our days. They think those were the laws of Moses, but remember that Jesus said he didn't come to abolish the law but to fulfill it. Matthew 5:17 Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. This second time, I saw those with tattoos on their bodies, and the demons were removing them with screwdrivers which is very painful. Wherever one has a tattoo on their bodies they bruised that area painfully with metal tools. Their flesh will be falling off. Leviticus 19.28 Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks. Upon you, I am the Lord. This verse makes it clear that God hates tattoos. According to my experience God loves us the way he created us. He loves our natural looks as he created us. Look at the image of Jesus in Revelation 1 colon 13-15 and in the middle of the seven candlesticks one like to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the breasts with a golden girdle. 14 His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, 15 And his feet like to fine brass as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. In his description, he had a garment down to his feet. His hair is as white as snow. So when you grow and get a white gray hair you are reflecting the image of God. Jesus didn't have any attachment in his description. 
The Bible says the beauty of an old man is the gray hair. There is no need to dye your hair at this age, it is an error. When you dye your hair you are not retaining the image of God. Secondly, when the angel came to prepare me to take me to heaven, he styled my own hair. I remember he used a normal comb to make lines to style my hair. So if you can plate your hair with your own hair without any attachment, it is good. The origin of dreadlocks matters a lot. Its origin is demonic. It was a person who didn't know or worship God. It was that person who brought reggae music and reggae doesn't glorify God. The reggae is sung to praise this man so it's nothing to do with God. Those who were doing these dreadlocks were also found to be people who loved smoking weed, cannabis. This is the end of my testimony and now when I came back I have repented completely and I cannot and don't want to go back there again. In conclusion, I will say hell is real and horrible. Heaven is real and amazing. Rapture is near. Jesus can come for his bride at any time so we must be ready. We don't know when the Holy Spirit will take the church from here. We have to be ready because you don't know when you will. Breathe your last breath. Anything that God calls sin and abomination will never enter the kingdom of God. Those who say God looks at the heart, yes he does, but no he also requires purity on the body. He cares for what you put on your body. 2 Corinthians 7 1 Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Beloved, the Lord has made his mind known to us in order to prepare us for heaven. He doesn't want to lose you to hell, please repent. The end of the testimony. Those who belong to Jesus hears his voice. John 10:27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. HTTPS slash slash spirit reports dot blogspot dot com slash twenty twenty slash zero six slash Lillian Blessing three dot HTML